Hello, I'm about to show you a couple of details uh, regarding the use of the RTL SDR in Python. So this is very easy. I'm not, it's not going to be a very long video. So I'm following here what's uh, described in this library RTL SDR. You can find over the internet here. By RTL SDR. This is the current version of the library. It's pretty easy to use. Uh, you can get a lot of information here. And uh, basically, uh, the, the main uh, function of this library, this read, read samples uh, function here, you just need to inform the number of samples. Before that, you have to set the sample rate, the center, the center frequency, and the gain just the, the everything else is uh, it's not uh, it's optional so that's everything we need to do in order to get the sample so a couple of details I'm um, I'm going to show you here sometimes they are not very clear and sometimes people are uh, are a little bit in doubt about them so I'm declaring here the library I'm declaring here I'm also importing here matplotlib you're going to see, we are going to use it for a plot, uh, power spectrum density. And here I open an instance of the RTL SDR object. I'm calling the variable SDR. Of course, it only works if there is an SDR connected in our, in our USB port. I set the sample rate. Um, you have to check for a uh, first which are the valid numbers for the sample rate of your SDR. Uh, we cannot put any arbitrary random number here. I guess this is one of the, this is the one of the numbers, 2.4, I guess, mega samples per second and one mega sample per second. You just need to type in one of the allowed numbers. Just pay attention that the sample rate in this case is the same as our frequency bandwidth. Um, I create some variables here using the same sample rate because this is sample rate here is a is a variable and this is an instance. This is a, a this is a pertains the object. They are not the same. And here I'm setting the center frequency to for uh, 100. I'm going to put it 400 first just to show you here. Uh, and then, then I do the same here. I create a variable with center frequency in case I need to use it for another goal. It's better to use a variable instead of this, uh, the, of the parameter of this object SDR here. And then this is very important, the gain. What is the gain I need to set? We have, we need to be very careful because, and uh, they can burn, their RF front end can can, can, can be damaged if uh, the, the input power is too high. What is too high for an SDR? Uh, of course, it depends on the unit. It depends if it's uh, original, if it's a knockoff. But uh, rule of thumb, uh, nothing above 0 dBm should be allowed to get inside one of these uh, SDRs. Uh, you can leave it for in auto or uh, for automatic. Uh, it's a kind of AGC of the SDR, or in my case, I put it zero. Pay attention because the RTL, a lot of gain can be provided. I guess around 50, around 40 dB, which is a lot. And in case you are close to a broadcast or a, a very strong signal, you can indeed burn and damage uh, for, uh, for good your uh, SDR. Uh, here is just I'm closing some uh, existing plots. This is just a bug that I found here. Might not be the case for you. And this is very important, the num number of samples. We are saving the samples in like this i'm showing you here it's just a whole bunch a vector of complex numbers there is no information of time so there is no information how long does it take from this sample to this next sample so there's no information of it what gives us the information of time is the number of samples. If I write here number of samples the same as the sample rate, that means we are acquiring one second. So 2048 
mega samples per second. If I, if I write this number here, I'm going to get one second of acquiring time. If I multiply here by 10, I'm going to take 10 seconds. If I multiply by 0.5, I'm going to have 500 milliseconds. That's the basic idea. Again, there is no information whatsoever on the raw data uh, which pertains, which informs you the time scale of your, uh, of your files. It's not the same as oscilloscopes. When you save some, um, some ASCII data of an oscilloscope, usually the time information is provided in the file. That's not the case for, uh, uh, for SDRs. I close the SDR here, and then I'm just printing the samples. As you can see here, uh, the samples are uh, complex numbers. Why, they are, why are they complex? Because we are, we are uh, sampling uh, we are the, the baseband information in IQ uh, format. So it's uh, a complex number. And this is time domain. There is no information, there is absolutely no information of frequency uh, domain in the uh, raw data in, given by the SDR. All SDRs work with time domain. If you want to see the frequency domain, it's because someone under the hood uh, performed some sort of frequency of Fourier transform on the data. Uh, in our case here, we are using this following the same uh, that was uh, given, the information given in this library, this, using this PSD uh, from matplotlib. I just need to inform the PSD, the samples, the acquired time domain samples. I'm just informing the sample rate. I'm dividing by uh, one, one to the power of six to get in megahertz and the center frequency. That's everything it's needed for showing you what's the frequency domain in the data. I delete the samples when it's done because the samples can be, as you can expect, two million samples can be quite big. If I run this code, as you can see here, I do not have currently the SDR in my USB. I'm connecting it quickly here. Let's see if it works. I run again. It takes some time, as you can see, and it shows the plot of our frequency domain executed by this PSD a function here of matplotlib. And this is what we get from uh, the raw data. It's important to know, uh, I think everybody knows this, this uh, central frequency here, this is an artifact. It does not exist in the real world. It's the zero IF uh, leaking in the down conversion process. It's very easy to get rid of it, but uh, it's not, it's, it physically, it's, it does not exist, this carrier exactly at the center frequency. If I switch to one 100 megahertz, I'm supposed to see the FM radius that I have in my region. As you can see here, I still have the zero IF number here, and I have three or four different carriers around this two megahertz, two megahertz bandwidth that I sampled with my SDR. And again, uh, this is the data, this is the data in time domain that it's stored in this uh, samples variable. So everything that it's uh, sent by the SDR is time domain. Each number here is an 8-bit number.